Hello everyone. Quite frequently I'm asked, what's the easiest way to go online and find free aerial imagery for my project? So I wanted to cover an example of that today. Before we get into that, however, I just wanted to remind about the Bing map integration in Civil 3D. I can show that by going to the geolocation panel of the ribbon and turning on map aerial. So you can see I have live Bing maps available for my project. The one requirement to use this, however, I'll turn that off, is that I have a coordinate system set in the drawing. So if I go to settings, right click, edit drawing settings, I do have a coordinate system, NAD 83 North Carolina US foot state plane. So let's jump out to a browser. The project we're gonna to consider today is the Carowinds Amusement Park near Charlotte, North Carolina. The way I would typically start a search like this, especially if I was familiar with the area, is to start local and then expand nationally or globally. So what I mean is I would start by going to a city or county local resource, maybe looking for their GIS department. From there, I might go to a university nearby or even the large state university and look for a GIS department mapping, something like that. From there, I might go expand to a State Department of Transportation website. They almost always have some GIS data available. From there, I'll go most likely to some nationally published sites like the USGS site. That's a great uh, place to start. The USDA, Department of Agriculture, sites like that where I could download data. So in this particular case, I'm not familiar with the area, so I just did a basic Google search, North Carolina aerial imagery, and the first link was to a university, North Carolina State University GIS department. And this particular link is great because it actually links to other sites that would be valuable to me. So the first one that they show is a NC one map seamless download. I love the word seamless when I'm looking for this type of data because that means the maps are gonna match typically side to side, and I'm not gonna have to do any kind of cleanup or tiling or stitching. So let's click on that. This is actually what I used in this particular case. Zoom into the area in question. There we go. And the amusement park is here right on the uh, South Carolina border. So I'll draw an area with this box. And it'll show me what's available from this site. Notice here, this gives me an option for historical imagery. Was this something we wouldn't have with a Bing map integration? In other words, this would be a reason to look for imagery like this. If I click on 2015, I can hit the preview button and I can see that uh, my park is here. And if I hover, you can see the red lines are showing the tiles that touch my green box. And that will be the ones that uh, show available for me to download. So I'm in good shape there. I can redefine the box if I'd like. In other words, if I wanted the next tiles to the south as well, I would just draw a slightly bigger green box and then it would show those tiles as a potential downloads. So now I type in my email address and hit download and I'll get an email to pull that data down. And what I'll get is a big zip file like this and I'll have SID files and uh, those are the images. The SDW are the geolocation files. Now before I leave Google here, I'm sorry, or before I leave the uh, NC State website, I just wanna show you the second or third link that they publish is the one that I mentioned is one of the most popular for this type of search, the USGS national map. If I click on this, I'm gonna to go to the TNM viewer. And then there's one more link here. You can tell that their links are a little bit out of date on the website, but that's okay. If I link to download data, this is kind of the latest version of this national map viewer. So if you like, you could save that as a bookmark, viewer.nationalmap.gov. And this works very similar to the other website. It just has better searching capabilities. I could type in Carol Wins. I could draw a box. And now before I do a search on the products, because this site has a lot of varying products that I can download, such as topo maps, elevational products. So your digital elevation models, imagery, there's my imagery. So I can click find products. It'll show me the high res one foot imagery that it has available. I can click on the footprint to see the size of the tile and where it's located. So I probably wouldn't grab that, that one in this case. But as I find the ones that I want to download, I click the add to cart and then I go to the view cart and there's download links to begin pulling those tiles.
So now let's jump back to Civil 3D. Remember, I do already have a coordinate system in this drawing of North Carolina State Plane. That's what I would need here. So I'll leave that alone. And now I wanna talk about the two ways to bring this data in. And there's actually more than two, but the two ways that I recommend. So if you have raster design, if let's say you have the AEC collection available to you, that will give you access to raster design. If it's installed, you have a raster tools ribbon at the top. To me, this is the best way to attach large high res imagery. To me, it handles it the best. So I'm gonna to go to the insert tab or button. And now I'm going to select all of those SID files. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to leave this to insertion wizard and I'm going to hit open. And now I'll just fit my screen. And there's my imagery, six tiles in in just a second or two. And notice as I zoom, it's very responsive as I pan. That's why I prefer raster design in this situation. If I would like to turn those frames off, the black frames, I can say image frame. It's set to one, I can set that to zero, and those go away. So I'll change it back to one. So I can see the tiles. There we go. So that's the first way, and to me, the recommended way. I'm going to go and detach these now. Uh, before I do that, just one note I forgot to mention. If I did not have a coordinate system set in this drawing, or if the coordinate system was different from the imagery's coordinate system, I would actually get a wizard or dialog boxes to step through the process of bringing that data in. I, I didn't receive any dialog boxes because the coordinate systems matched, and so it brought it right in. So I'm gonna go up to the manage attachment dialog here, and I'm gonna select all of these images with a shift select, and I'm gonna detach, and I miss one. There we go. So the second way, so if you don't have raster design, and you don't want to bring them into just a general local coordinate system at the origin. That's what the XREF command would do. We don't want to do that. What we can use is a tool in Map 3D, which is the FDO tools or the Map Workspace. A lot of you are familiar with this, but I just want to show it again. On the Home Tool Palette, I'm going to go to Map Task Pane. I'm going to turn it on. Click on On at the bottom. Now I'm going to Data, Connect to Data. I'm going to raster image. I'm going to say select a folder. I want the entire folder. There's my folder. Okay. And that's going to attach any image format in that folder. So I'm going to click connect. Here's all those files. I'll select one or all of them. Add to map. And it'll process each one of those tiles and bring it in. So this is the FDO connection. You can see these are each stylized. I can turn them on and off here really easily. So it is really nice. You can see the zoom is responsive. The pan is fairly responsive. So not bad. It's not as good as the raster design attachment, but still a good way to go if I do not have raster design installed. So my goal today was just to show an example of jumping out to the web and finding some free aerial imagery and bringing into Civil 3D when the basic Bing map live maps integrated into Civil 3D isn't enough. So I hope this has been beneficial. Have a great day.